Your faith is not based on your love for God. Your faith is based on you believing God's love for you. That's what faith towards God is. And that's one of the basics. That's the, it's one of the basic principles of faith, according to Hebrews chapter 6, is faith towards God. We love him because he first loved us. All fear, all lack of faith is a lack of believing God's love for you. That's what it is. So the way to remove that is to know, understand, and believe God's love for you individually. Regardless, as well as you know you, God knows you and still loves you. Now, the key is this. If God, who is love, loves you as much as he is love. Did you get that? Okay, I'll try to say it again. If God loves you as much as he is love. So what does that mean? That means he loves you with his total being because he is love. That means there's not one part of him that doesn't love you. If that's the case, what would he not do? Think about that. If you would do anything, what would he do? He would do anything only more because you are finite, whereas he is infinite. So what would he do? Well, he would do whatever he could justly do. So what, what makes it just? When you line up with his word, it makes him just in helping you. Until you line up with his word, there are things he cannot do for you because it would make him unjust. But if you line up with his word, all of his love can flow to you. So what would he not give if he could justly give it? Would he give healing? What would you do for your child? When I saw mine lying in a bed and... John Seeley Hospital, tubes running down her nose and tubes in her side because they had to pump her lungs up because her lungs collapsed. Hearing all the beepings and all the stuff going on. What do you think I would have done for her? I'm just a man. Wouldn't even say a good one. But what would I have done? I'd have done anything I could. What would God do? Because he is so much infinitely better, so infinitely more love. Of course he gave healing. He's done everything he can to get everything he's got to you. And he did it through Jesus. And then said, and you can live his life. Now, everything has been given, every blessing, we just have to receive it. We have to decide to line up with his word. And he said, oh, here's a here's condition. Faith. Faith what? What? Faith that he is who he said he is. Number one, he is light, he is life, and he is love. Number two, he is our provider. Number three, or four, or five, whatever it is, he is our healer. He is our righteousness. He is everything that every human needs. If you try to find it anywhere else, it'll run out. And you'll be looking again soon. But if you go to him, then through him and receive that, then everything else he has for you will be lived through him and you will never again hunger or thirst. That's what he said. I say, I don't know any, hardly any Christians at all that don't hunger and thirst. After different things, some after righteousness, some after experiencing the kingdom, some after healing, some after, you name it. But it's because we, we just don't believe his love for us. And we try to prove it by showing him, oh, we love you, we love you by words. And they said, don't, don't just love in word only, but in deed, in action. Don't tell me you love me. Show me. Do something. That's what he said. And he said, well, God, what can we do to show we love? Keep my commands. What's your command? That you love one another. Do you love me first? You love one another. 
Do for others as you would have done for you. That is the simplest thing in the world. So I'm waiting to hear from God what his will is. I just told you. <laughs> love him. Love your neighbor, which means how do I love my neighbor? You do for them what you would want done for you if you were in that situation. No more, no less. It's just that simple. Well, no, no. Tell me, tell me I have to read six chapters of the Bible a day. Tell me that I have to pray, you know, three times a day. Tell me I have to. No, 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 no. See, that's the Jewish mindset. I kept the 10. I've done all these commandments. What do I got to do for eternal life? Oh, keeping the commandments didn't give it to you, huh? Okay. Why? Because that shows me how good I am. I can check the boxes. But have I fed my hungry neighbor at the red light? <laughs> have I clothed the naked, fed the hungry? What have I done other than tell him how much you love him? He said, these people draw nigh me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That's not who we're supposed to be. Amen? Amen. I know this is quite different from what most people come to hear, come here to hear. But I've been preaching certain ways a long time. And we've seen great results. Great results. I mean, healings, testimony. I mean, what Michelle reads as the testimonies, that's the tip of the iceberg of what I get on my phone every day of what God is doing through this message or people that I'm praying for that come in and we get testimony. I've got some great ones I was thinking about sharing myself just because they come to me. But we have to realize, again, if we're going to look at the kingdom, Jesus came preaching a kingdom. And he said, it's your father's pleasure to give it to you. But living in it, listen, you can live in a kingdom and not live like the kingdom. Just like you live in this world and are not supposed to be of it. Don't live in the kingdom and not be of it. Don't get the benefits of the kingdom without the character of the kingdom and all of the rights of a citizen of the kingdom. Amen? Amen. 